The Bronx experienced one of the worst building fires in decades this past weekend. 17 people, including eight children, died after a faulty space heater caused the building to go up in flames. The day after the fire, newly elected New York City Mayor Eric Adams held a press conference in front of the building where he and other city officials tried to offer an explanation to the tragedy. Their narrative? The tenants negligently left the front door open as they fled the building, causing the fire to spread inside the building. City official after city official chastised the tenants and reminded them to close the door. Close the door. Closing the door. Legislation uh, that addresses either the manufacturing of space heaters or the need for education about fire safety or the need for self-closing doors. While there's no denying that open doors allow fires to spread through buildings, building fires don't start because someone leaves the door open. This fire in particular started because someone was relying on a space heater to keep warm in the middle of winter. This begs the question, why did this tenant need the space heater in the first place? Was the landlord providing adequate heat? I asked Eric Adams if the city was investigating whether or not the landlord was providing adequate heat, and he replied with the following. Is there any investigation as to whether or not the residents were receiving adequate heat? There was no outstanding violations of our knowledge of a heat complaint in the building. But a simple look at the website for the Department of Housing Preservation and Development shows several tenant complaints about lacking heat as recently as December. And these are just the complaints on record. Multiple tenants who I spoke to said that many tenants in the building used space heaters or their ovens to stay warm because the building wasn't properly heated. They don't so, give they don't give us enough heat. That that's so there are a lot of complaints. Everybody, about everybody, everybody got a heater in, in my building. Did no one tell Eric Adams this information, which I was able to ascertain in 15 minutes of talking to tenants and consulting the internet? Personally, I doubt it. One has to wonder if he might be avoiding the heating issues because the guy that owns this building, Rick Gropper, was on Eric Adams' mayoral transition team. They're friends. In fact, a lot of real estate developers made huge donations to his mayoral campaign. So is Eric Adams all of a sudden going to turn his back on the very industry that helped him get elected? Of course not. If Eric Adams were to actually enforce housing regulations, investigate crimes against tenants, and use this opportunity to launch citywide emergency inspections on the heating situation, it would be a disaster for housing capitalists like Rick Gropper, whose buildings have racked up tens of thousands of complaints across the 123 buildings his company owns. Many of these complaints related to heat. If Adams had campaigned on cracking down on housing violations, none of these real estate developers would have supported his campaign. This is why the Adams administration is not so subtly deflecting blame to the vulnerable tenant. People like Rick Gropper count on tenants accepting the blame for his neglect or pinning it on others. But if his tenants, the tens of thousands of New Yorkers that he's scarred, join together to point the finger at Gropper, he might actually have to face punishment for his repeated neglect. Every time there's been a major fire like this in New York City, whether it was the Triangle Shirtwaist fire or the fires in the Bronx throughout the 70s, the politicians and the media's reaction has always been to blame the individuals. But the survivors in these cases refuse to accept the blame and organize movements for accountability that highlighted the social conditions that led to those fires. That's what Adams and Gropper are afraid of. Real accountability.